Hi everyone, welcome back. In case you are new here, I'm Jonathan, your tech informant. Before I start, I would like to apologize for the late upload of this tutorial. I've been busy lately with some personal projects and I will try my best to do weekly upload on this channel. So if you have not subscribed up to now, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that each time I release useful videos, both tutorials and other news on technology will be notified. So as I'm speaking to you right now, a world press conference is going on right at Zone Tech Park here in Lagos and hundreds of WordPress users and lovers have come uh, around to listen to guys like Tubonsu, Alabi, Wonsu and the rest. So if you want to get a recap of what happened in this World Camp Lagos, you can check out Olamide's YouTube channel. She did a wonderful recap on this event. Back to today's video, the essence of this tutorial is to show you that you can still design a website without writing a single code. Before you start building a web page, it's a good practice for you to have a logical design by sketching out what you really plan to achieve. That will make the building or designing process much, much faster. So that when you get into your computer, you know what you want to achieve and you go straight to get the design or build what you want to build. So in this video, I wish you will learn how you can set up a front page on your WordPress website and also how to install a theme. Theme are little softwares that is being installed on WordPress website that can change the design, the look and feel of your website. So you will learn how you can do this. And also the theme we're going to be using in this video is the DV theme. It's a wonderful theme that makes it easier for you to build your website by dragging and dropping content on your web pages. So without saying much, let's get started. This is the home page we created from our previous video and here we can see the hello world, other stuff. So for us now to go to the back end, we we'll have to log on to localhost slash the name of your website which is Cassandra store for this project. And then after the Cassandra store, we need to add slash wp-login. So now we are on the login page of the WordPress, the back end. So when we log in, this will take us to the WordPress dashboard. Logging in into the dashboard, we'll go to the pages. In the pages, we have two pages on the list. And this page is the privacy policy and the sample page. They are shipped pre-installed with, with WordPress. So we don't have anything to do with it right now. So we're going to move them to the trash. So if we check out on the front page and refresh the page, we see that nothing happened, meaning that the pages we move to the trash do not affect the front page. So we'll go back to the back end once again. Now we're going to create a new page that we we'll use as a front page for the website. So we'll go to add new, then give the page a title and then publish it. And after we publish it, we will now see the home page on the list of the pages on the website. When we go back to the front end and refresh it, we see that there's no impact or there's no, no changes on the front end. So we'll go back to the back end. In order to make the page we just created to be the front end page for the website, we'll go to appearance, customize, and then go to um, home page settings, then choose static, and then select home. That's the page we just created. We select it and then click publish and then we click the cancel button. So if we go back to the front end and refresh the page, we can see there's a change here. We can see instead of the hello world, we can see home. So that means that the front page of the website is now being pointed to the home page that we just created. Whatever thing we're going to design on that page will be the front page of the website. And as you can see here, just right beside the home page, we can see a tag that is attached to its front page to, sh to show you that that particular page is the front page for the website. Now the next thing we are going to do is to install a theme on the website. The purpose of this theme is to change the look and feel of the website entirely. So for us to do that, we we'll go to appearance, click on the theme 
and then we can see the things that are pre-installed with WordPress. So we are not going to use any of this, we are going to add a new thing to the website. We click add new, we can see some other things that is available to be installed on WordPress. But I'm not going to be using the, any of this thing. I have it's a thing that I've already downloaded. So what I will do is to click the upload team, then browse to the file where the, the team file is being saved. And then when you've selected the file, then you click install now. The team is now installing. After that, you click activate for the team to be activated. Here we can see that the DV team is now active. You can see it. So others are still there. So I, when we now go, when we now go to the front end and refresh, we can see that the design of the front page is now is looking different. We can also see the DV logo at the upper left, and then the home and some other other titles on the right side of the page, that the sidebars, we can see that the look and feel of the front page or the website is now totally different from what we used to have. Now we are going to go to the home page to now start designing the home page by using the DV Builder. So the DV Builder is just like a web designing software that enables you to design your website without writing code or not writing much code. So here we have three options. For this project we are going to build from scratch. So we are going to click the start building from scratch. So this is how the DV builder will look like. Everything will be visual. The first icon we will seeing is a plus icon that represents a section of your web page. So to add the row to this section, click on the green button and that will give you an option of inserting a row so for this project we are going to be using the one with three columns that's the first column will be taking half of the space and then the remaining two will share the rest space here the column is now created so in the first column i'll be adding a test to it but before i add the test i will change the background of the row i will make it something in the dark family and then I will apply and then the next thing I'm going to do, I will add a text to it. Test setting window will come up, then I will change the content and go to the design. Design. I will go to the design tab, then select the test font. I will choose Roboto, then change the color to white and then click save. So I will duplicate the same test model and then drag and drop without writing any code, then I will change the content and put my other content. Then I'll now align it to the right and then save. So the last column, I'll be adding a search bar. Then put something on the place order. Then I will like to remove the show button. Then the test, I will make it white and then save. So now I will adjust the padding of this row, dragging it up. This is okay for me. So I'm going to insert another row. The content of this row will be a slider. So the next row I'm going to add now, the slider will be inside of it. So I will make it a row with one column. So I will select the one column and then insert a slider model. Here I have the slider setting with two slider inside it. So I'll go to the setting of the first slider and change the headings and also the content. And now change the background. I will pick a picture in the gallery and then apply it. We also need to take the test of retention, send it to the left and this is how it's looking now. But as you can see the the white the white text is on top of a bright background so we need something that is darker so that the, the text on the slider will be, vi will be visible. So I will go to the background, click on the background gradient and then add the background gradient. Then the gradient I will place it above the background and then clicking yes. 
So the first color of the gradient, I will make it transparent by dragging this lever down. Then the second color, I will make it black or in the family of dark. So this will give us this effect. So at the same time, we need to adjust the direction of the gradient by moving it to 270 degree so that the, the darker side will be coming from the left. So this is okay. I think this is good for the for the effect I want. So now what I will do, I will I will delete the second slide and then duplicate the first one. Then what I will do on the second one is just to change the title and the text content and also the background. Here we can see that the background, the image here is too big. So we now choose the image size to be fit and then the background image position will take it to the top right. So this will give us this positioning of the background. Then we can see that the, the gradient is not blending well with the background of the image. So we'll now go to the background itself and then make the opacity of the background, make it zero. We'll bring it down totally and then apply. So we can see the effect. You can see now that the gradient blends with the background of the image. So after this is done, we we'll just click apply. So now we have a, a slider on our web page. The next thing I'm going to do is now to adjust the padding at the top. By moving it to the position I desire. I don't want any space to be there, so I'll just make it the, the padding space, make it zero, zero, the top and button zero, and that's it. And click save. So, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add another row under it. So, I will, what I will do, I will duplicate the one I have at, on the top and then drag and drop. Now, I will delete the last column and then go and adjust the colon setting, making it 50-50, that's two columns. So I will change the contents of the columns and then also change the background of the row. I will make it something in the red family and then apply and save it. So that's it. So this is the header of the website. So you can see how the front page looks like. So if we go to the front end and refresh, we can see that we have a perfect design here. I will stop here in this video and we upload the concluding parts in my next. So if this video has been helpful to you, please don't forget to like and share it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.